three, two. Hey, everybody. We are here in Kunming continuing our wonderful New China Adventure. We are traveling across the southwestern portion of this vast country, showing you really how what fit into history, uh, the recent past, and of course the future. And one thing about this city, my a wonderful colleague here, Tao Yuan. We are in the flower capital of the world, and it is unfortunately that you can't smell what we're enjoying right now. It is an amazingly fragrant area. You can see right here, these are the kind of flowers that look like they could be used. Flowers in all kinds. In all kinds, but these look like they could be used at Christmas at some time, like holly almost. Well, you know, the name of this flower is actually Love Peace. Love Peace, really? Love Peace, yeah. So probably for Valentine's Day, or maybe I can ask the... 老板想问一下，这个花一般是用在什么时候？过节日。过节日 ，Every holiday you can send these to a loved one because they are called love love, love piece. And it's very significant because a big holiday is coming up. Uh huh. Mid Autumn Festival, which is coming up in just two days. So, Sean, if you look around us. It's not just the flower. It's not just the fresh flowers, right? right Everything right. here is related to flowers. Everything's coming up roses. So if you look at the street lamps here. Yes. Can we have a shot of this? So everything here takes the sh shape of a flower, even the street lamps. Oh, that's amazing! And we have a wonderful colleague uh, who's going to be joining us, uh, Zhang Xixi. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hi. Hi. So, everyone. <laughs> so Miss Zhang is actually a local from Kunming. So just tell us a little bit your uh, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself because you had a bit of a relationship with flowers, right? How did that happen, and how did it go? Hi everyone. I'm Sisi. Actually, I'm a. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. I'm local in Kwame, and actually, my husband and I just decided to move from downtown to this area simply because we love to live in Chengong. You know, this is a <laughs> new area、Absolutely. in Kwame, and it has been witnessing a lot of magnificent development in this city. And several years ago, I have to confess a secret. Actually, my bestie and I wanted <laughs> to start a flower business, so that's why we spend so much time visiting this market almost every night. It's crazy and at gonna, night. And we're going to take folks inside in a bit. But this massive facility you see here、Building. is just full of flowers that go really not all over China, but really go everywhere. Uh, definitely, and according to my knowledge, I think there must be over hundreds of varieties of flowers、hundreds、provided of every night here.、Wow. So it goes everywhere around the world. Wow! And、yeah. what I read was that during crazy season, so New Year's, Valentine's, up to 12 million flowers could change hands in this market on any given night. It's amazing, and you walk in, and they're in bouquets. They're in large groups.、Um, it's going to be amazing to show everybody that、uh, in, in just a little bit. But I imagine you never get tired of coming here and seeing this.、Uh, it must make you proud to come from the southwest、uh, part of China and work so close to this、uh, wholesale area.、Uh, definitely, because I love flowers, and my mom loves flowers, and、uh, my family members love flowers. Which lady、so. doesn't, right? Especially the girls. <laughs> exactly. I mean. Exactly. So. Especially when I post some, you know, my flowers and, and at home, they made my friends in Beijing and Shanghai jealous. <laughs> and you even have flowers on your dress today, and that is not by accident. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's designed on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, Zhang Xixi, thank you very much for joining us and bringing us up to date on this and the millions of flowers that change hands every day. And it's not just the fragrant. Flowers, the petals, and such. Absolutely. Like I said before, even the street lights are flowers. So everything here is actually related to flowers. So, Sis, if you don't mind, could you just walk with us for a little bit and, and just introduce、Absolutely. to us the surroundings and the all kinds of small shops that surrounding the area? Because it smells so nice. It's not just the smell of the flower. Is Sean? What are you smelling? Oh, this is. We are in the <laughs> flower bakery, and I did not stutter. This is basically everything in here comes from petals, comes from flowers, and it is wonderful.、And、we have some、uh, quickly. I'll show you a couple of arrangements. We have one that's ready for、uh, the Mid Autumn Festival、uh, here. Really nice、uh, area.、And、so moon cakes. So moon Mid Autumn cakes. Festival is all about. It's on the Chinese lunar calendar, of course, and it's all about、um, enjoying the round moon with your family. It's a time for family reunion. So if you you're seeing these moon cakes, you can see flowers. 
It smells so amazing. So they're stuffed with flowers as well. And you can also see flower tea right here. And, and this is what you see. Shoppers come in and they're very discerning. They, want, they know what they want and they're looking very carefully. Absolutely. But if you just take a smell of this, wow. Sean, I think it still very smells rich. of fresh roses, right? And to all my colleagues back in Washington, D.C., who hope I'm going to bring them some of these wonderful cakes, forget about it. <laughs> it's not going to happen. I'll we'll leave them all here. Yes, but the local specialty here is actually what's called flower cakes, and that's also the specialty of this little shop right here. So I'm talking about these little guys behind us. So if I just walk behind the counter, Sean, sure. I want to just show our audience how it's made. And by the way, this is the owner of this shop. Can you introduce yourself for us? Uh, I'm uh, the owner of this shop. So you're in charge of this shop. This is your owner. Okay, now can you take us to the design and see how this flower is made? How this flower is made? Can you just show us how the famous flower cakes are made. Mm. Okay. Can you can you these these all got flowers in it? Can you cut one for us? This is really a treat, John. Absolutely. You could watch. I'm going to eat. <laughs> oh, so you can see. Can I, can I pick up one to show my colleague over there? Because I've never seen one, and I bet he's never. Sean, you see, this is one of the unbaked ones, and you can see fl uh, fresh flower petals still inside oh, wow. there. And we have a little treat here. Going to Sean's going to, of course, taste some. He's been wanting to do that forever now. It's really good. How does it taste? Yeah, you know, it's not too sweet, so uh -huh. it, it's wonderful. And see, see, these are among your favorite, but rose is not your favorite flavor. What is? Yeah, because I think the people in Yunnan they're so creative because food and cuisine is the motivation of their creativity. So now rose is not the only kind of ingredients for for these kind of cakes, jasmine and. Osmanthus, you know, all kinds of flowers. And jasmine, the fillings, is my favorite. I'm still chewing. It's delicious. <laughs> okay, so rose is actually the most classic one, correct? Yes. Okay, but now they're using all sorts of flowers. I'm seeing, um, if we can get a, no, my camera's, my camera's actually behind us. But if we can see these things on here, they have corn ones, mm -hmm. and they have jasmine ones, and they have durum ones. And they have egg ones, yeah. but oh, wow. all of them, all of them has got rose in it too, right? Yes. So it's so rose, rose plus one more thing. Okay. I'm curious wow, that's amazing. who comes in here to shop. Would it be locals? Would it be people looking to buy uh, flowers wholesale? Just people looking forward to the holidays or everybody? I've to be honest, I think local people like me will, will choose this kind of flower cake as their top one choice. But as uh, sometimes when we you know, want to buy some souvenirs for our foreign friends, especially American and Canadian ones, I found my friends love this kind of cake. So I think this is sort of like a tacit culture to, bought, to buy this kind of flowers to foreign friends. And the packaging itself, too. I mean, it, it, it's the whole, it's everything that comes together. So people who haven't been to this city, what do you tell them to expect when they come down to this area? Uh, first of all, of course, the night, mar night market of flowers. Because the night market flowers in that area is completely crazy at night, especially after 8 o'clock. Because you can see hundreds of flowers changing hands, and also you can smell the smell, the fragrance, and the buzz. It's just like a big party at night. And they sell these. Oh, I, I, I promised earlier on the program, so here is a little flower ring he for my colleague. He put a ring on me. <laughs> it looks gorgeous. <laughs> Before we go, though, I do want to check with Miss Leo. I just want to know how many shops like this are around here in this region. I want to ask you, like this flower shop, what is the 
Shops for flower cakes, just like this one in this area. And how is business? 生意大概是怎么样？就是是不是来云南玩的游客都想买一些这样的东西带回去？是的。Ah,、uh, Miss Liu just told me that everyone who comes to Yunnan, they actually want to get some to bring home because this is a nice souvenir to give to family and friends. This is really a local specialty. It's famous all across the country. And I was being nosy earlier where all this came from. And if you look under here, you can see. This is where everything's the rose petals and everything.、Oh. So how about that, Sean?、So、you know what? These are actually tea. Oh, these are tea. <laughs> I have to learn Mandarin. I have to learn、oh, Mandarin. Oh, the white guy here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dragging us down, but it is still amazing how people can come through and you know, and smell the teas, smell the rose petals. It, it, it's 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 a, such a holistic、uh, experience to come here, and in the uh, coming. Uh, Half hour or so, we're going to take you inside. And you, what was your thought when you walked in and saw that amazing、uh, flower area? Actually, I came to this flower market about two or three years ago with my cameraman, who's standing right behind the camera. That was my first time here. I didn't know anything like this existed back then. This is just beyond. I mean, you said at the top of the show, this building is gigantic. Yeah. And once you walk inside, it's just rows and rows of flowers of. All different kinds, like flowers you've never even seen in your life before, you know. And it's 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 everywhere. You can't turn around without finding some beautiful kind of lily here, the roses inside, everything that's sold all over the world in there. Our viewers are in for a big treat, and I know our colleagues who are in the northeast and the southeast. As we continue our new China adventure, are going to be envious of us, especially you. Especially me with my gorgeous flower ring. <laughs> Do I look cute in it?、Oh. Absolutely,、Aww. it becomes you. It becomes you. <laughs> okay, so I think、um, we need a little bit of time to just go inside of the flower market and check out how our guests inside there are doing. So why don't we toss back to our friends in the north? The southeast. The, We're going to southeast. southeast.、Okay. I can never get this right. Okay. Well, you did perfectly. <laughs> At least you knew they were tea leaves and not rose petals. And <laughs>、okay. down there, yes, we're going to toss it back to our friends in the in the southeast, Lindy and Genwa.、Uh, take it away, guys. Um. Five, four, three. Well, thank you so much to our colleagues in the southwest, Taiwan, and Sean Caleb's. Talking about flower cakes and an adversity making us all here very hungry indeed, isn't that so? That's right. I want some flower cakes. Seriously, yeah, send them over some. some flower cakes from there. What is? I think they're in Kunming right now. That's right.、Uh -huh. That's right. Well, we're just driving into、uh, Guangzhou. Of course, we just、uh, pulled into Guangdong Province、uh, a few、uh, hours ago, and we're making our way into the city center.、Um, I've been to Guangdong Province before. Actually, was here last year for the real time. China tour, but th on that occasion I visited Shenzhen. What's interesting, though, I find coming from Kenya was that I flew actually directly from Nairobi to Guangzhou, which just shows the interest、uh, in Africa to come specifically to the city in China. I've known it as a place of trade and business, but what I'm learning or discovering today is that it's famous for a whole other reason, and that is flowers. I know you've been living here for a while、That's、now, Jinhua.、Uh, tell me about your experience、uh, in Guangzhou and why it's called the Flower City. Yeah. As the name suggests, it's a flower city, a city full of flowers. So if you look outside now, I know you can see some buildings, but on the balconies you can see trees and also some greenery. And very lush here. I think that is one of the reasons why it's a city of flowers. Also, there is another reason. So we have、uh, in different seasons,、uh -huh. all through the year, they have flowers,、That's、different、nice. flowers. Like tangerine trees, and they have peonies, and they have、um, all kinds of different kinds of flowers that I couldn't name. <laughs> so very interesting.、City. Yeah, it's yeah. a flower city. And besides that, it's also called a city of five goats. Let's not forget that. City of five goats. So it、yeah. has many names. But someone who does know quite a lot about why it's called the flower city is our roaming reporter Omar Khan. Here's more on Guangzhou's legacy around flowers.
Say the name Guangzhou and a variety of images come to mind. Most people are quick to think of a trading hub, a port city, and the heart of the vibrant Greater Bay Area. But aside from those features, this city is also renowned for being China's flower city. History tells the story. Back in the Han Dynasty, flowers were brought to the city of Guangzhou as the maritime Silk Road began to develop. Then in the Tang Dynasty, the flower trade bloomed. Fast forward to today, Guangzhou is still a commercial hub, but lined with natural beauty. It's also worth mentioning how the city of Guangzhou transforms during the Spring Festival time period. Its flower markets are a global sensation drawing people from both China and abroad. President of the Belt and Road Cooperative Community. Welcome. And of course, Andy Mark is with us, and he is the senior Hello. fellow at the Center for China and Globalization. Uh, Hanwha, let me start with you. So, as we understand, and perhaps you, you know, you really are the best person to, to explain the history a little <laughs> bit for us. Um, this this name, the Flower City all goes back to the Maritime Silk Road. Just talk us through yes. the history and how this might could have continued uh, to be Guangzhou's legacy as we move into the Belt and Road era. Yeah, even though we don't have flower cake, we have more flowers to talk about. That's true. Yeah. So Guangzhou got its nickname, not only the flower city, but the ghost city, five ghost city. These nicknames have a very long history, even older than the Maritime Silk Road initiative which all the way goes back to the Qing and Han Dynasty when the Silk Road, even the Asian Silk Road was initiated to connect the old China and the other countries, the small countries neighboring the Qing Dynasty and the further to either the, to further to the west and to the other to the other countries. So back then people are not only interested, interested in the silk and the tea from China, from Asian China, but the other stuff, including flowers. Not only the flowers from China, but flowers from West countries to be introduced into China. But at that time, the preservation conditions are not that good, are not that encouraging. So the flower trade or the flower exchange is not that flourishing compared to a later in the Ming and the Qing dynasty when the maritime Silk Road is finally established and the Guangzhou and the Quanzhou in Fujian province which we are going to tap in in a few days are the two major ports to do this marine time trade uh, activities and exchange with more countries including the current ASEAN countries in the Southeast Asian part and also African Africa. African countries yeah. Yeah. Be, uh, Kenya being one of the key stops and also the European countries as well yeah,
money is yeah. in the export. Uh, this flower is going all over the world. It's quite an important contributor yeah. to the country's economy. But on that note then, Andy, let's bring you into this. Um, to what extent or to how important is the flower market to Guangzhou's economy? Yeah. Well, it's a great question. I mean, one thing, flowers, uh, the appreciation of flowers is almost as old as mankind itself. And in Guangzhou in particular, you know, the culture here has a great appreciation for flowers, but especially around Spring Festival or Chinese New Year, where it's a custom, you know, throughout China, we give red packets, we eat certain food. But here in Guangzhou, it's also a tradition to go to the flower market and buy different kinds of flowers. So I think we see that as being a very uh, key part of the local culture. But then thinking about it from a business perspective, in China, China has the largest middle class in the world, rising incomes, increasingly sophisticated. And what that means is that people are not just thinking about their material needs, buying food, buying new clothes, but actually what we could call the experience economy. So a part of that includes flowers. So there are some businesses now, you can of course go to a floral shop and buy flowers, but now you can also buy them online. And sometimes with these subscription businesses where every day, every week, uh, the business will deliver flowers to your door. So I think Guangzhou has a very, very important role to play in that, as does a place called Donan in Yunnan province, which has become the one of the biggest uh, flower markets in the world. I think it ranks up there with uh, Alzmir in the Netherlands. Um, so I think that's uh, what we can expect uh, for flowers for Guangzhou in the future. Yeah, it's good to know that this market, the flower economy, is pushing so many different sectors, right? Yes. So you're going to have this delivery sector, and yeah. of course online e-commerce and everything. And in Guangzhou, they have this very old saying, no flowers fair, no spring festival. Mm. That is very interesting here. That is yeah. certainly the extreme showing yeah. the appreciation from Guangzhou people and the, yeah. its position and the physical location as the transport center, as the hub of sending flowers not only to Guangzhou people but to people all over the country. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the appreciation of flowers in other countries, we said we talk about the Kenyan's appreciation of the roses and also there are many other countries in the Western Europe of their different appreciations of different uh, flowers and the plants and through the Silk Road this kind of appreciation and experience of sharing uh, come to Guangzhou through the Silk Road and it's combined coupled with the local appreciation of the local flowers so flowers make a very good bridge to connect people uh, along the Silk Road cities and the countries and the a flower can also be a symbol of this culture activity and the culture exchange between people along the Silk Road countries as well. Like we spoke about, we discussed about the language's role and the responsibility in not only maintaining the culture, the, its own culture heritage, but also enhance the cultural communication among different groups of people. I think a flower is playing this similar role. Identity thing, right? When it comes to flowers, in that sense. Well, I think what's quite interesting is that Guangdong seems to be aware of this. Um, the, the capacity or the potential of flowers uh, to bring people together. And in fact, Guangdong has taken flower fairs to other parts of the world. A famous one takes place in New York, I understand, yeah. almost yes. every year. But it's not just about the flowers. That comes with language, it comes with food, and allows people in other countries to learn more about the Canton culture and learn more about, uh, about Guangdong. Now, Andy, you grew up in the United States. Perhaps you can share with us your experience of encountering and engaging with Canton culture from so far away. Sure. Well, actually, my family is originally from Guangdong province. So, um, you know, Guangdong does have a very rich history and has, uh, has had a cultural impact in places like the United States. So if we go back to the 1800s when the United States was building its transcontinental railroad, uh, actually a lot of the workers came from Guangdong province. So that was one of the first uh, ways that people from Guangdong had an impact and started influencing uh, the culture, the society of the United States. And then of course if we think about food, uh, the first generation of 
uh, widespread Chinese restaurants in the United States. And if you go to anywhere in the United States, even a very, very small town, you can be guaranteed there's at least one or two Chinese restaurants. Yeah. And initially they were all uh, Cantonese food, so Americanized uh, Cantonese food, but Cantonese food uh, nevertheless. So I think that, in fact, when a lot of people, uh, outsiders, foreigners, think of Chinese culture in a way, a lot of times the first thing they think of is Cantonese culture. And that can be the food, but also the movies as well, because Hong Kong is a part of this greater Guangdong region culturally and linguistically. And Hong Kong movies especially became very, very popular. And that's another form of uh, you know culture that uh, not people around the world have learned about uh, Guangdong. It, it actually reminds me a little bit of the history of uh, Chinese people coming into South Africa, my home country. Similarly, turn of the century, the discovery of gold in Johannesburg, and a lot of uh, miners actually yeah. came from China, from Guangdong, or from the Canton region to come and work uh, uh, in South Africa. And so that influence is still there. Certainly in the food, I know that you know I, I sort of discovered dim sum a long time ago and just assumed that it was everywhere in China, or very Chinese, but actually yeah. it's specifically from the Canton region. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. What's the national flower in South Africa and Kenya? The national flower in South Africa is called the protea. protea. It comes from the aloe family, but it's, so it often grows in quite dry areas, but it's a very big flower. When it flowers, it's, it's almost the size of like a cabbage head, you know? Okay. And it's kind of pink in the center with these little tiny flowers and then the leaves on the other side. Yeah, I think cabbage. it's... It's almost, I mean, it's very, it's very big and it's very hardy and very strong. And I think South Africa uses that as a national flower um, because of the idea that sort of, uh, almost the idea that beauty can grow out of anywhere, out of this hardship, out of this dry area, out of a plant that looks like nothing will emerge this incredible flower. Uh, yeah, we have a chance to visit the flower market yeah. later. I hope we can find it. I wonder. The I market. Wonder, I wonder. Because, yeah, ah. flower market in Guangzhou is really ah. famous for housing, you know, the world class and yeah. the variety of flowers from all over the world. Yeah. So the national flower for China is DNA. So how about the U.S.? You know, that's a good question. I yeah. don't know. Uh, I. I'm not sure actually. That's right, that's the yeah. difference because yeah. in China, different flowers represent different meanings. It conveys yes. some special, very unique um, expression, I would say, right? Yeah. So, yeah. PNA, it's just an uh, elegance mm. for the flower in South Africa. We don't have it here in China. Yes. Probably strength or something that yes. you can survive so in, yeah. Yeah, in some yeah. hard times. Mm -hmm. Or tangerine tree that we find a lot of them here in Guangdong area. Yes. And that means goodwill, right? And I know. Do you have a story to share with us? I do, I do yeah. have a story have to share to with you. Oh, wait. Where is the... Uh... Seems to have okay. disappeared. You have disappeared it? somewhere. <laughs> okay. I think it's here. So, I was given a gift yeah. uh, before gift. traveling here. A flower night, gift? Yes, well, flower. a kind of an emblem of a flower. Um, okay. It was the night before I traveled to China. Yeah, we can give it a quick look. Where yeah. it's yeah. Walk, right? Two okay. friends of mine gave me this, which is the yeah. Chinese cabbage, yeah? Yeah, this Bak is the Chinese Bak Toy. Bak Toy. Bak Toy. Welcome to Guangdong. Yeah. Officially, yeah. Cantonese. Bak Toy. If we <laughs> Yeah, give it a zoom in. So okay, we're zooming in. It's a flower in broader sense. Yes. It's more a vegetable. It's more of a vegetable. Yeah, it's a vegetable. <laughs> yeah. And it's close enough for, for today. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> yeah. So I was given this gift the day before and I was told to travel with it, to keep it with me because yes. it will bring, I understand it represents wealth and prosperity. Luck and uh, fortune. Like, okay, so luck and fortune. Yeah. yeah. So I carried it on, on, the, on my cell phone cover and so it, would just, it was just hanging at the bottom of my cell phone cover like this. But since I've had it, I've, I actually have not experienced a lot of luck. In fact, over the past few days, I've managed to lose a cell phone charger. I have uh, a pair of sunglasses are now broken. Mm -hmm. This necklace, strangely, this pendant on this necklace yeah. disappeared. Yeah. It just fell off somehow. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, maybe this talisman is just not meant for me. Somehow, either I'm doing something wrong or it's not meant for me. Mm -hmm. And so I took it off. And minutes later, I found the, the pendant <laughs> just wow. reappeared. So I'm not sure. It's either that it is not for me, yeah. or but Genoa has another theory, right? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so we met in at the airport in yes. Guangzhou, right? And yeah. then we flew together to Nanning the day one of okay. our mammoth 
12 day trip and then I noticed that bug toy or Chinese cabbage, right? And they said it's a prosperity or wealth or something. Anyway, it is some kind of talisman in the Chinese culture. And I was really happy that you had this. <laughs> and then, yeah, because of the bad luck and everything, you took it off. So, because we have another theory for that, but that is totally superstitious. It's not scientific, <laughs> right? It's not proved yet. So, for the Chinese cabbage, you have the root and you also have the leaves, right? And yeah. the root actually should have faced the door or oh, the outside oh, because oh. the root were taking all the nutrition and the good things, right? Oh. And because we're using uh -huh. this phone, so we were guessing and joking mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. like this, right? So it would be dangling and then yeah. the root were taking all the fat load from the ground, the dust and everything. <laughs> Probably that's part of the reason <laughs> that you True. were so unlucky for the past three days. So, yeah, the minute you took it off and then you have yeah, to And I found my pendant again. So perhaps I was just wearing it all wrong, right? I was using it the wrong way. I need to make sure that it's always yeah. facing a door and yeah. not facing down or else it'll pick up bad luck. Learn something new. <laughs> a little something new, but that is totally superstitious. No science involved. You are at all. already turning yourself into a Guangzhou native. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a native. On one side, the Guangdong people is famous for its braveness, embracing new world. Mm. Uh, all the way in the history and in the current times, as we discussed, the Guangdong people will always be the first batch of people going outside, uh, ups and downs, during ups and downs times. And also, Guangdong people on the other side is very paying much attention, much more attention than the other part of Chinese to, you know, to look into the history, look into the feng shui style, yeah. and uh, believing that kind of feng shui, and even the karma thing. So that's, that's very, you know, uniquely combined into a Guangzhou typical native person. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I've come home somehow. Yeah. Well, I think also much more strongly wedded to tradition, because one of the uh, interesting things about Guangdong as well is there's still many of these ancestral temples yeah. where uh, your family maintains a list of all of the ancestors going back sometimes uh, you know hundreds many hundreds of years as well so Andy originally you're from Guangdong this area right so uh, do you come back regularly to visit I've been back a few times yes okay yes, and yeah. do you have this ancestral temple that we you do. said just now yes, yes. oh you do yeah yeah Oh, that is yes. interesting. That yep. is very family oriented. That is the south of China, right? Yeah. So besides the flowers and also the economy and everything, or the Chinese capital, the talisman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is a lot of cultural stuff that's involved in this topic, right? Yes. Yeah. One more point to add, because the cabbage is green, I want to add, because yes. China is entering into the second phase of putting forward the Belt and Road Initiative. Yes. And the second phase target is to have a greener, cleaner BRI. So speaking of the greener BRI, I believe that the flower can play, can play a more important role, you know, it, because it represents the uh, culture, the environmental protection, all the good meaning will be faced and you know come together for a flower and we talk about the different flowers. Absolutely. I mean it is that was the main reason I was here last year in Guangdong province uh, real time China of course then we were celebrating 40 years um, of the reform and opening up and of course it's had such a transformational impact not only on Guangdong but the entire country and um, the evidence all around us but I guess Guangdong has to go through a new phase now it has to move into a new space in which it's embracing green growth and what we spoke a little bit about earlier this high quality growth yes. maybe we can chat more about sure. that. Sure. Mm -hmm. No and of course we know that since uh, the beginning of economic reform and opening that Guangdong really has led the way, one of the reasons, because it was right next to Hong Kong and of course with Shenzhen as the special economic uh, zone. But now as China has developed and evolved so that many of the original in industries that powered uh, China's economic growth uh, now are becoming less emphasized. So I think as Helen said, uh, green and clean is very important. But also, I think just moving up the uh, the value chain as well, and we're seeing uh, here a couple years ago. I was also at the uh, Fortune Global Forum, mm -hmm. and you know, one of the initiatives that the Guangzhou government is uh, really stressing and emphasizing is creating these industries of the future, whether that's artificial intelligence, uh, driverless vehicles, these types of things as well. And of course, Guangzhou has 
you know, very strong manufacturing base, as well as the uh, assembly that is powered uh, China's economic reform. Absolutely. It is quite fascinating indeed. And of course, you know, we are still on the road, making our way uh, into Guangzhou. It is a big city, and at least for one thing, as we can see outside, it's very That's green. Right. Right? It's very green and lush here. Yeah. Very green okay. and very lush. And we are on our way to the city centre, to downtown, right? I said the traffic, and you know, we can see the traffic now a little bit. So I think that is almost there. We're almost there around the, uh, our destination. It is true. Mm -hmm. Very green city indeed, and one that, uh, of course, I'm learning a whole lot of new things about it. There was one thing that hasn't been fully explained yet, though, was the, the meaning of the goats. When you said it's oh, a goat city. Oh, the meaning city. of the five goats, yes. right? It's a different nickname. When it comes to Guangzhou, it's always the city of five goats, even the local newspapers. Yes. Okay. It's because, there were, according to the legend, the folklore once again, China, mostly Chinese. So they have five goats that came from the heaven to help people in Guangzhou or in this area back then to help build the city and then the five goats also represent prosperity and wealth and also filial piety and everything that's related to the traditional Chinese culture. That is why it's called the city of five goats and if you want to go see the five goats, there is a statue that's a symbol. That is the Yushu Park here in Guangzhou, definitely. If we uh, can stay a little bit longer here in Guangzhou, I can take you around. Well, of course, it must be our tour guide after six months After six months Guangzhou, of living here. Right? Have yes. you ever been to this park yet? No, I've never been to Guangzhou, only oh, Shenzhen. So okay. this is all the first for me. Now we are turning around, I think, that way. You can see the tall buildings. Yes. But it, it yeah. is the new area of Guangdong. This is the new area. Yeah. This is not the new area of Guangzhou here. Uh -huh. yeah. I think this is very near the uh, center, the downtown of Guangzhou. That's where we're heading for right now. So we are going to the Canton Fair. And later, we're going to talk about the development of Guangzhou. Also, the reform and opening up that we're talking about last year and you were here that yeah. has been talked about for quite a while right yeah, yeah even for the 70th anniversary yeah. of the people's republic of china still the same it's because of the reform and opening up that china is what it is right now yes, right. yeah so this is another milestone last year i recall we also made a very brief stop in guangzhou uh -huh. where we invited some you know American Chamber of Commerce, mm -hmm. uh, Guangzhou, South Re China? Yeah, a Guangzhou representative. Meet him. To, oh, uh, really? To talk about actually under the cloud of U.S. China trade war, how the businessmen from the two countries can work more closely together. Mm -hmm. Now, here it is the trade war, it is the ever growing, ever escalating trade war. So, I think. Uh, but also bearing in mind that the Chinese, the central government, as well as the local governments are now moving harder towards this Great Bay Area mm -hmm. uh, planning and execution with Guangdong or Guangzhou and Shenzhen two cities are as the development, next development phase engine of this Great Bay Area development. So this is so, the Great Bay yeah, Area. It's yeah. more yeah. of including a Hong signal. Kong, including Hong Kong. Yeah, yeah. including Hong yeah. Kong. Yeah. It's more of a signal yeah. to me is that China now is more focused on its own business to do better, to better strengthen ourselves, to better deepen this opening up and the reform, and to have more opportunities to do business with countries, including U.S., but beyond the U.S., to do businesses with African countries, with European countries more, and to cope with that well, and also to increase the internal do domestic consumption demand, right. so so that we can be better prepared mm -hmm. for this Great Bay Area development and beyond. I mean, it seems this might, well, in my view, and I correct me if I'm wrong, that this is a particularly uh, unique strategy, very unique to China, this regional integration yeah. of bringing all these cities together to create a bigger economy. Mm -hmm. uh, just tell me a little bit more about that and why China's moving in that direction. Well, I think one reason is that China is just so big, I mean so 1.3 billion people, that when we look at this Greater Bay Area concept, in fact, you know, we see this in 
uh, the north as well with this so-called Jingjingji, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. Beijing, Tianjin, and then the surrounding province of uh, Hebei, 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 right? Mm -hmm. So that this is because China is so big. I think one again we touched on this earlier too that uh, policies are really tailored to the region. Mm -hmm. So the Greater Bay Area, you know, has Hong Kong as one engine, especially in financial services. Uh, logistics and then the manufacturing area of Guangdong province. Um, so I think that's one of the reasons. But also I think it's also a very uh, far-sighted uh, policy because seeing that you know Hong Kong is facing some challenges today of course and some of it is completely predictable because as the rest of China grows you know Hong Kong's uh, importance decreases in a relative sense so you know the government then has to think how do we continue delivering prosperity to the citizens of Hong Kong as well? You actually mentioned a word, keyword integrity. So this policy is to integrate the resources, right. talents, as well as other potentials together and to create synergies. And to redistribute the resources as yes. well, right? Because yeah. they combine together yeah. and the policy is from top down, top down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, will be implemented and executed very well because of those we have a lot of areas, right? We call mm -hmm. it the Greater Bay areas, as yeah. you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Also in the middle parts of it. And also China is really trying to reach out to other countries as well as Miss Han just Euro said. Asia. Yeah, yeah. Euro Asia, Southeast Asia. Especially yeah. we have six new pilot free tree mm -hmm. zones. Yes. One is in northeast. Yes. Yeah, it's the Jeff and we are, right? And then Soviet is gonna reach out to Russia and yes. here in Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region yes. was just left. Mm. Yeah, it is to Southeast Asia and to the ASEAN countries, right? Yes. Okay, so on the borders. Anyways, so we have been talking a lot, right? Yes. From flowers <laughs> to economy mm. to China's policies. And so also it's about this talisman. Yes. Very interesting story. Very interesting right? story indeed. I think I'm not going to keep it on my cell phone, but when I get home, mm. I'll put it somewhere and make sure that it's always facing the door and hope for better That's luck. Right. Yeah, the, the root of it. The roots must face the door. I yeah. won't forget that. What we usually do for this kind of you know good good gestures. Put it in the water. Yeah, uh, put okay. it in water is a very good way. Yes, yeah. uh, I'm inspired. Yeah. I usually put it in my bag and I carry it on okay. a daily basis. But I I don't wear that. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's a good meaning that it can be carried. You know, okay. wherever I go. I don't know. It's very much related to Chinese. There are five elements or four elements in the West, right? Mm -hmm. You have water, or fire, or earth, or something like that. Yeah. So it creates yeah. important that it could get yes. you more wealth or something <laughs> like that. But like Chinese feng shui, there is no science. A little yeah. bit superstitious, yeah. right? So very interesting. Uh, it's going to be Sean and Tao Yuan. We have been talking a lot from flowers to economy yeah. and to this talisman. Very interesting topics, of course. Now I think that is no. For us, right? Everything that's that's it. I think we've covered it all for now, but of course, there will be plenty more as we continue exploring Guangdong Province and uh, this whole journey, of course, that goes on right up, up, up until the 20th. So, do make sure you follow us and uh, stay with us throughout this journey. My mom used to tell me all the time that she wanted to open a flower shop once she retires. Personally, lilies are my favorite because of the fragrance, but this is the home scale. <laughs> market that we're talking about. Look at this gigantic building behind us with rows and rows of flowers of every color and every shape. This is the place to go when it comes to flowers in China, yeah, as, the center of China's flower sphere. As I understand, this is the second largest wholesale flower market in the world, only behind the Netherlands and all their tulips and well-known flowers. But this lily uh, becomes you uh, quite so, uh, Tai Yuan. But to talk a bit about this, I mean, th this it may seem very busy for us right now, a lot of activity, but really, this is the calm before the storm. Because Show in the hasn't evening, yet, right? all the flowers come in, yeah. everybody bids on them to buy these wholesale and then ship them out all across the country. So our friends in the Northeast on this new China adventure and in the Southeast, if they're going to be looking at flowers, they very well could have come from here. So of we're course. all connected again. I feel like my ring is coming off, so I'll just... Take it off. But Tom, um, joining us to talk more about this flower market is again uh, Miss Zhang Si. Uh, she's a Guanming local, and she used to be in the flower business. Tell us what happened. What went wrong? Uh, it's 
actually it was very interesting because we wanted to you know exchange these kinds of very impressive experience of having flowers every day or every week at home so we just wanted to try to transfer this kind of fresh flowers to the office ladies in Beijing and Shanghai mm -hmm. but later on it turned out the shipping and how to keep the flowers in the fresh shape that was such a you know challenge Absolutely. how long ago was this Almost five years ago. Wow. 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 But things have changed. I think it, it, it has been much easier for the traders so far because they have better express, you know, and shipping companies to support them and better technology. So maybe it's time to try it again. What do you say to that? Good idea. So we now we just started the business together. <laughs> Cece, let's uh, walk over this way because there's so much to see. We want to get you out. Uh, obviously looking for the best kind of flower out here and she's uh, what's she doing right now Cece uh, I think they are just uh, trying to make this kind of bouquet bouquet's ba uh, basket and you know this is one of the famous flowers in, in Yunnan because it has a very beautiful name uh, in translation it says don't forget about me oh, ooh, wow, wow. exactly exactly and it can stay for such a long time even though when it when you get gets dry, people won't notice. So it's sort of like in a state forever. And these ones are fresh flowers too. I thought they're dry flowers. Uh, it's actually fresh. Yeah, but when it turns dry, you won't notice. Mm. Uh, Cece, could you ask her what the challenge is to attract customers because there are so many flowers here. Mm. Mm. Uh, 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 to make the bouquets and basket look pretty and look beautiful. Yeah, matching the colors and yeah. just arranging the, the shape. Perfect. Yes, yes, yes. Taoyuan, why don't you show us a little bit more because this facility is just huge. Yes, we can walk around a little bit, but I'm afraid I, I won't be able to... This is a working area, so things are going to kind of yeah. go a little crazy yeah. every now and then. Yeah, I was just saying, Sean, we can walk around a little bit, but I'm sure I won't be able to tell you the names of every kind of flower that we see. Look at this massive venue. See, this is yeah. what gets me. It looks, it's longer. It's almost like endless. Yeah. It yeah. looks like it's as long as two soccer pitches or something like that. There's a second floor yeah. too. Oh, right, right. Yeah. And interesting going on the second floor right now, there's a bidding process. Uh, people getting ready for bidding. What is that for and what is that going to be like? I, I think it's quite similar to the bidding system in Amsterdam. Because uh, after the bidding section and all the flowers are good to go, go to the local market as well as the international market. And, and I'm guessing that it's mainly targeting the wholesale market. Right, right. I actually did a story on that, so I can answer that question ah, for you. Let it go. So I came here two years ago, just before Valentine's Day. Man, it was crazy. You could, you could barely walk inside this venue. So we also visited the auction house that you talked about. It's actually when a when Sissi said um, it, the, the bidding process is kind of similar to the one in Amsterdam, she meant um, it's a Dutch auction, so the prize ah, actually goes ah. down. And then once you feel the prize is actually low enough, you can push the button to say, okay, I'm buying this one. So it's as much about the calculation of the prize as it is the speed at which you press that button. You have so, to be quick. So I was inside that room and it was tense, man. Everyone was smoking. Everyone <laughs> was trying to stay vigilant. You know, the atmosphere there, man, it just was crazy. You would never guess this is a flower auction. And we got our guests, as always. And uh, Victor Gao, I got to start with you. Wow, thank you so much, Mr. Gao. That was you, so That is so you. becoming on you. <laughs> it, 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 it really does something. And I got a lot of presents today. Oh, oh, Mr. Chen, you like shouldn't have. <laughs> this is wonderful. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That should be on your head. That should be on my head. Oh, a lady. I mean, it's I got another head, one. Right? You have another one. This Aww, is I'm everything's coming up roses, as they say. Uh, I'm going to actually hand this off for Thank just you. a second. Uh, but let's talk about what this is, because I mean, this this is big business. Uh, Victor, if I can start with you, uh, tell me a bit about this. 
how this plays out, how does this compare uh, to Holland, and why is this so important, especially to Yunnan province? I think this is uh, the largest flower market in Yunnan province and also in China. Uh, this market claims that it handles about 80% of all the flowers being traded in Kunming. And Kunming also handles the majority, more than 50% of all the flowers traded in China. So you can see the importance of this flower market. Now I went to the Netherlands and I visited the flower market over there. I think it's much more technically more sophisticated than this one. But this one is really a happy family. Everyone here is happy. <laughs> Traders, for example, business people, financiers, and also people like me. I'm very excited. This is really a world of peace and harmony. We're all very happy here. I think these flower farmers and traders probably are the happiest persons in the world. Yeah, sure. Uh, Tao Yuan, what do you think of this? I mean, it's just, uh, to me, it's breathtaking. Last time I came here, it, the time was too short, and it was so crowded that you couldn't really take in the scale of this building. But right now, just walking here, just seeing these rows after rows of fresh flowers, it's just hard to believe that flower business can actually turn into something like this. Yeah. So, you actually live here, not in Kunming, but in yeah, Dali, right another right. city in Yunnan. You're not originally from here. What attracted you to come to this area of the country? Well, it's actually something that you can show from this huge flower factory, uh, flower market, is that, you know, when I first went to Dali, Dali is a place with only half a million population. And my hometown, Nanjing, is a place with 10 million population, so that's 20 times of Dali. But Dali's flower market was much larger than Nanjing's. So if you know the people in Yunnan province, they are more like leisure life compared with coastal cities and provinces. So the life here is much more relaxed, fulfilled with leisure. Many people grow flowers. So you can see so huge, uh, large uh, flower market over here, but not in other places in, in China. So that, that's why you see it here. I mean, this kind of leisure life really attracts me to this province. Right, right, right. So, Sean, how do you feel about this? I mean, this is your first time here. To me, I, like, I, I, I kind of want to go back here for just a second because to me, this kind of encapsulates what this is, this is all like. People just stop. The negotiations go on. Uh, Victor Gao, just kind of walk us through what is going on here and why this is important because they're, the competition is stiff. In a sense, they are negotiating price. <laughs> And I understand this is not the busiest uh, business hour. When evening comes, this hall will be crowded with all kinds of flowers, all kinds of traders, all kinds of buyers. And I think there will be retailers, wholesalers, families, for example, they all come over here. And I think uh, Kunming, given its climate and uh, geographical situation, really is the best place in China to grow all kinds of flowers because Yunnan has subtropical climate as well as tropical climate. So many kinds of flowers actually grow here. And this really makes the local people very happy. I think the traders, Look at no the matter. smile on her face. Exactly. Okay. No matter how much money they how make, they are smile? happy. Their happiness is worth than all the money they make, I hope. But like Victor just said, this is um, sleeping time yes. for this venue right now because the shows. The show hasn't started yet. And if I'm not mistaken, she's there, watching us there, right now. I, no, I think she's not just watching, she's live streaming us. That is awesome. <laughs> so for all of our platforms that really enjoy us, we want to thank you for watching, not just on our broadcast, but I'm going to try to find out a little bit more about her. Victor, can you ask her her, her name for me? <laughs> 我叫尤正平。您会是尤正平。对，姓尤。Miss尤正平。啊，对。尤正平，Miss尤。Miss尤。And and Miss Yu, why are you live streaming this out right now? 你是在现场直播吗？啊，对，我在现场直播。你供给谁看呢？啊，我在淘宝上卖呢。She is selling flower on Taobao. On Taobao. So our customers can see her flower, see her customers, and they can bid or buy online. This is China now. This is Vietnam. Wow. This is e-commerce. Taobao, of course, being the online shopping oh, platform. Uh, Taobao. Alibaba. So that means 
Mr. Gao, she's probably selling her flowers to customers all across the country right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. She probably has logistics support mm -hmm. and she can sell online as well as offline here on this counter. New China, Absolutely. new smart. New China. Absolutely. China, 70 years, yes. Why don't some, you ask her a bit about how she does the kind of business? Okay, sure. Flowers packed up are already sold on the so so be sold. Said, Every day she sells about 50% online and 50% offline. So it's equal business now for her. So we're basically salespeople on Taobao right now. <laughs> Mr. Gao, should we say hi yes. to Hello. Ms. Yo's customers over here? here we're CGTN, Ms. China Yo. Global Television Network, and we're live streaming for you <laughs> all across surprise. our platform, including Facebook, Let's YouTube, Weibo, as well as uh, our CGTN mobile app. And Ms. Yu has the best flower in this market. <laughs> You know, Mr. Thank Chen, you. Mr. And of Chen. course, we're also live for you on Miss Yo's live stream. Absolutely. Hello, everyone. We all need <laughs> peace. Long live peace. Long live flowers. Victor's Thank you, Miss Yo. On a good store. Mr. Chen, when we came in here, I initially thought with all these customers walking through, we would be in the way. But right now, we're a very popular uh, sidetrack, if you will. And someone like that, that's, that's just brilliant. Yeah, exactly. That's a kind of uh, commerce that's in the new commerce that we see. Previously, people, I mean, the sellers just send their products to their customers. They don't get a reflection. Mm. It's like one-way selling. You don't know how your customers feel. You don't know what they want in the traditional selling. The information is not flowing. But in e-commerce, it's like you, you can just screen things to them and they're feeding back. Look at when we were talking to that uh, peddler. Uh, the customers were actually texting things on the screen, and it, that's the feedback about the CGTN. You know. it, here's one thing that is amazing to me. If we turn the camera around, that is the new way. This is the old school method of selling flowers. Yeah, we have seen. Traditional way. That's yes. that's that's a tough job. Now, 先生, you come back. We say a few words. Come back. 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 Come you know, your heart goes out to this gentleman. He's. Where, where do you come from? Yeah. <laughs> So for, for each one of these bouquets cents. that you're seeing, it's only two yuan and eighty cents. So that's approximate. My math is really terrible, but two yuan and eighty cents, approximately thirty or forty cents for each one of these. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, Makes about thirty yuan each day, so that's less than five dollars. So, Mr. I, Mr. Chen, I have to think back on the effort to lift people out of poverty in this nation. And you see a gentleman like that, and clearly he's been doing this for a long time. What is the future going to hold for people uh, like that gentleman here in Yunnan province who have had to scrape and work the, feet, work the land, work very hard to make their salary? What, how, how will things change? Well, uh, the e-commerce is actually changing many things, but e-commerce are not changing the life of people like what you have saw. Because the, the first store we have visited, she is able to utilize the e-commerce platform. But for that gentleman there, he don't know how to do with it. So e-commerce alone will not help that. It's the government's role to step in, teach these people how to use e-commerce, then they can go and do the shopping online, things like that. So not a hand out, a way to make money in the future. Well, they have to be taught about how to engage themselves into the new economy, and that's actually the government's role and the government's teaching that will help them. It's a, quite a blossoming story here, Tao Yuan. Uh, you found uh, something Mr. else? Mr. Gao actually just caught my attention to this. So you see, if you, if you scan this QR code and add the vendor on WeChat, then she's going to be... Are you live streaming as well? She's live streaming us as well. So everything is digital right now. So on one can you, hand... Can you, can you spend, just turn the... 
，转过来，转过来屏幕，转过来看，嗯。This is to me. So it says night delivered nationwide. Delivered nationwide. Wow. Add me on WeChat. Add me on WeChat. Yes. Add me. Add me. See. WeChat, of course, this being the, the as we speak. being the almighty social media app of China, which kind of rules people's life right now. So we're seeing. Newer ways of doing business like this, but just now we also saw traditional ways of doing business, having flowers kind of in a basket on your back. So the new era is here, yeah. Mr. Gao. It's like、Absolutely. either you embrace it or you be left behind. How do you feel、Absolutely. about? How do you feel about that? I mean, what do the older generations people do? Absolutely, in- I'm particularly touched by this father. I hope holding his baby over there behind the lady. And you can see, this is a happy family. They grow flower, they sell flower, they have、uh, off the line market over here, but they also have nationwide distribution,、mm-hmm. national market through WeChat. So it's changing. China is changing. These flower vendors are changing, and I think the younger generation is growing up, and hopefully they will live in greater happiness and greater peace. I mean, the transition is certainly exciting, but during this transi- transitional period. What do you think would happen to the older generations who are not catching up with this kind of people like me? People like Sean. I think everyone need to adapt, and、uh, everyone probably is going through this destructive innovation. So the world tomorrow will be different from the world we understand, and the kids will have a new life to live. Different from our a new China to live in a new new China. And、yes. what? Gets me coming from the United States. Firstly, obviously, just the whole spectacle. But in the U.S., if you wanted to buy flowers, you would either have to have cash or a credit card to do this. And China is so much more advanced than other nations in terms of everything is done on your phone, and that is going to be the future. And again, it goes back to what we saw yesterday with these data storage centers and how the new China is really poised to do. Everything. Just、uh, to go back to where you're still carrying cash with you. I don't have any cash with me. But just to go back to yesterday, while we were still in Guizhou,、um, our guide was telling us that they don't need to. They don't even need to carry their ID around anymore because everything is stored in the cloud right now. Unbelievable. Thank、yeah. <laughs> you. That's a. You know, it's it's just been an amazing journey、uh, coming through here. We're running out of time,、uh, Mr. Chen. But I quickly want to ask you,、uh, having spent so much time here in this province. Do you feel a sense of pride when you come through and you see all the new technology? You see the smiling faces, and you see the correspondents basically blown away by everything that's going that goes on here. It's actually the way that technology is actually changing our life. Like the example you just said, you're still carrying cash with you. That was fake cash around the country a long time ago. But nowadays, people don't do that anymore, and there are no stealer anymore. People can't steal things from people. You only have a mobile phone, and everybody is looking at that mobile phone every day. So all these things, the social security has actually been improved because the technology is utilized. This is a good example, I suppose. Wonderful. Now, <laughs> oh, minutes, minutes, time is running out. Okay. <laughs> well, for 20 minutes we did really good, and then we scared the child. <laughs> But for all this, let's go back to to the northeast. Let's see if they can top that. Our good friends Jeff and Wow. Thank you. Thank you. 发财啊！发财。And, uh, on the road for a good two, three hours. It、yes. feels anyway from Da Qing. It's the most beautiful surroundings at the moment, and a gorgeous summer's day. I mean, the trees are spectacular、uh, on both sides. It really, is quite beautiful. And of course, we're having a lovely time talking about all manner of things, but mainly China. Um, yes. Well, it's also my first time being here in Daqing. Well, of course, we are on our way to Harbin, one of my favorite cities. But I just want to share my experience so far. I mean, Daqing, to me as a southerner, it sounds like 
some greedy places. Uh, I know they have discovered oil in the 1950s, late 1950s, but have been struggling economically. But what I've seen so far, it kind of refreshed by, is, is, is that the connotation then for the rest of China? People look at Da Qing and it means to you, it means oil fields, yes. greed, wealth. I don't think it's on everyone's, you know, to-go to, to list, you know, to travel or anything, but... Um, well, that's, a, that's actually a real pretty pity because when we were there, the, the natural beauty of this city yes. of about of a hundred lakes, these wonderful wetlands. It, it was actually very breathtaking, but it was this weird kind of uh, compilation of these wetlands mm. and then these oil derricks in the middle of them. Which were being what, what, You know, what is interesting also, you know, uh, people from outside, you know, when you talk about Da Qing, they will naturally think about the oil production, right. you know, those equipment, kowtowing, like, you know, extracting oil out of the uh, ground. Which that, doesn't uh, sound very appealing. You know, right, to but actually, ordinary, this but is it was a, beautiful. You know, it it's beautiful. beautiful. And the, the beauty of Da Qing, I think, is coming from years of effort, right. you know, to really to renovate the city and to make the city, you know, like, uh, you know, Green environmentally uh, friendly. I mean, you particularly the oil production, environmentally uh, friendly. That is very important, I think, you know, for the transport shape, transport formation of the Da Qing city. And they are now able to attract, for example, uh, Volvo, right. you know. And then be, because of the Volvo, you know, there are some other, you know, uh, parts companies like uh, Johnson Control, you know, like companies producing seeds. Uh, you know, they are also investing Following in Dali suits, basically. Because, you know, they have to form a kind of an industrial cluster. Right. You know, that helped the city. And then the city has a, a, an ambition to build so the think, automotive industry into what they call the 100 billion worth of uh, RB worth of, uh, uh, of industry. The city of Dachin will become this new manufacturing powerhouse. Or exactly. So uh, even though, you know, the oil. Uh, you know, extraction is still a major okay, part of right. their, their industrial activities. They have a hundred year plan for that. Uh, yes, and then they are planning to keep, for example, the downstream operations in the, in the city. Previously, they just uh, export the uh, crude to the other part of the country and for them to process you know, the down, downstream yeah, products. I mean, and what, you, what is meant by downstream are the products that you can create from oil. For instance, right now between Japan and South Korea, there's a big you know, trade, trade war. war. And, and at the heart of it is when the Japanese said that there's a, a chemical that is used in the manufacturing and the coatings of high-tech phones, glasses, uh, surfaces, and things like this. And they were going to require Korean companies to get a, uh, a, a license that they never needed before. To but make China, China makes these. And this is these products are downstream. This is the oil. You take oil, and then you refine it, and you make these uh, products. So China has an opportunity with this. China already produces them, but the real opportunity is to do it at a much higher level. The reason the Japanese had such a big uh, part of the market is they produced to a very high purity level. So this would be an example of an opportunity for yeah. Dachin. Yeah, as, as a matter of fact, you know, the, the, what is you know, in the downstream is called petrochemical. Mm. And what he talks about is, you know, is the, one of the special uh, product, derivative products. Derivative from, products. Right, from the, uh, uh, the oil and cracking right, process. But, you know, more generally, I think you know, like, uh, you know, plastic bags actually is a uh, byproduct of the downstream processes. So there could be deep processing, like yes. derivative products, a yeah. whole industrial chain exactly. that's redeveloped here. Let's move on now to where we're heading to. We're heading to Harbin. Harbin. Now all I really know about Harbin is the Ice, Ice Festival, Snow Festival, which I know we had a, a conversation yes. on WeChat a couple of years ago when cold. you were there. Really, really fun. You, you were telling me how you can't feel your toes in the I couldn't cold. feel my toes, my fingers, <laughs> I couldn't feel anything. Feels like nothing belongs to me, you know. <laughs> I mean, I mean that is a, a spectacular event, isn't it? I mean, then yes. people come from uh, all across over China world, and all yeah. over the world for it to experience but, the ice and snow culture. But when the ice melts, sometime in January, February, early March, what's the rest of the year like for Harbin? Okay, well, yeah, Professor Lee is from Harbin, right? As a matter of fact, you know, you know, Harbin has very rich 
uh, in terms of the resources, you know, this, you know, especially the, uh, the, I think the integration of foreign culture in the life, in the architecture, in the lifestyle of Harbin is also a kind of attraction. And, and Harbin the, you know, here, Russian, I presume, because it's Russian Russian style buildings, you know, Jewish style buildings, and you can even find a Jewish cemetery very well preserved. You know, uh, one of the uh, vice uh, president of, of Israel actually was born in Harbin. Wow. So uh, this city has a kind of a you know a, a comprehensive search history in terms of its relationship with the foreign cultures. Right. So uh, if you go to Harbin, the Central Street, you know you will see different kind of buildings, and the pavement is made made of uh, is paved with stone. Yeah, so, sculpture. Right. China has quite. Sculpture is only part of it. China has quite a few of these towns, like Xi'an, for yep. example, a place that, that that has so many different cultures that come together and has so many different, right. different architecture from so many different cultures. Tianjin, another example, where yeah. you can really and Shanghai see too. the influence. And Shanghai is yeah. another. Western, what do you yeah. think it brings to a, a Chinese city in particular to have that mix of so many different cultures? You know, this, you know, this uh, characteristic of the Ch of Harbin economy with the so-called the Western touch is actually the result of it opening up. Mm. So a lot of the Russian companies, you know, especially some, some the Russian restaurants are being opened and some of the Russian products are brought to Does this mean I'm finally going to get some vodka tonight? Yes. I mean, Definitely. Vodka, whiskey, like whatever. that. We haven't had vodka. Yes, honestly. and I'm going to invite you and my friend Aina to join me for a couple of drinks, you know, uh, especially Russian vodka. Don't forget the, the, after, after, after. After. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about vodka and food again. All right. <laughs> so let's get back to power. I mean, uh, Harbin played a very, very special place when you were growing up. There. Yes, I think, you know, this is really interesting. You know, Harbin is uh, the, the district. You know, devoted to just two uh, state-owned, uh, three state-owned companies, mm -hmm. and these three owned companies, uh, three state-owned companies, were called the three powers of Harbin. One, you know, was producing actually electro electronic, uh, ele electrical generator. The other, producing uh, uh, turbine, steam turbine, mm -hmm. uh, turbines, and uh, still another producing industrial boilers. Mm -hmm. And all of them actually were set up. Uh, you know, according to the Russian, you know, at that time, Soviet, Soviet, Soviet Union. Money, the Soviet Union model, you know, the management system, the management of, uh, of the production, you know, all copy, a uh, uh, direct copy of the uh, Soviet Union uh, style. So are you saying Harbin is also going uh, going through a, a massive transformation in its energy yes, that's structure? Yes, Exactly. So uh, as China opened up, you know, as, as the China's transformation process is going up and these three powers are facing the challenges for example the product may not be suitable for you know the, the market because the market has been changing and uh, you know with the reform and opening uh, offered you know, uh, effort for example the electric generator uh, company you know they created a group company which eventually was publicly listed, and the, t the steam turbine worked, you know, with foreign partners to develop, you know, world-class product, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. So these are, you know, the state-owned companies that are being transformed into uh, companies that have competitiveness on the market. Yeah, but I mean, the new, the new, what I hear constantly about uh, Halon John and uh, Harbin is, uh, and the whole Northeast is that they need to change. And a lot of that is around this, these areas of these new development zones, new economic zones, policies given by the central government to these areas to, to change them literally from the old manufacturing to the new one. Uh, you know, if, if you're an entrepreneur and you want to set up and you want to do something in computers, yes, you can go to Shanghai, Shenzhen, right. and Beijing, but you're going to pay a lot more. But they have there, they'll actually give you subsidies. They'll give you, they have incubators that you can go into. And they're trying to create these clusters that are centered around different parts of the te uh, technology industry. Right. And these, this is something people should look at. Young people who say, look, I want to start a business. I have some great ideas. 
this is the kind of stepping off zone. So this is a key. Then people may argue and that what he said is even more is going to be even more true after you know the province is designated as the free trade, trade pilot, pilot zone. zone. Yeah. And hardly and actually it was set up there. It's been fascinating listening to what you've been saying. Yeah. But we've run out of time. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we toss back to our colleagues on the southwest route, Sean Caleb's and Talia. Established in 1998, the Zhongnan Flower Market in the city of Kunming is one of the largest in the world. The market is divided into a retail session in the day and wholesale session in the evening. More than 1,600 varieties of flowers are on sale here every day, and the transactions can last until midnight. In 2018, about 7 billion freshly cut flowers were sold to some 50 countries and regions, with revenues reaching around 822 million US dollars. This occupies 70% of the total market share in China. The market is now considered a barometer of the flower prices in China. In 2002, the market adopted an auction system, similar to that in the Netherlands, for wholesalers starting from higher asking price and bidding for a lower price. Today, the market has become a cluster for various related industries. Apart from the sale of freshly cut flowers, businesses on seedlings, greenhouse facilities, floral design training and wedding flower services are also booming. Now, flowers have grown into one of Kunming's pillar industries. With improvements in the city's logistics system, the products are expected to be exported to more countries. Wow, what a great look at the Donan uh, flower market where we are right now. And no matter where we go, you can just see flowers and the smells, the fragrance that wafts throughout this giant warehouse. And look, it may appear kind of busy to the uh, untrained eye, but this is just a trickle. The real stuff's going to come pouring in later on tonight when the wholesalers come in. And my good friend, Tao Yuan, Tao Yuan has always been able to find a flower. And before we get you, look at our guy over there. He's, he's <laughs> in the spirit as well. That's, that's right. Our whole team is now embracing the floral market. Uh, very Boy nicely. and girl. Boy and girl. So what do you think? So um, I think I, I do want to say some final words, but right now I want to invite our good friend, Ms. Um, Zhang Sisi, to join us again, because I, I do want to ask you this. Kunming has always been China's spring city, flower capital, but when you were a little girl, did something like this exist back then? Of course not. I, I clearly remember when I was little and when my uncle wanted to you know, have a fantastic wedding and we had to get up at 4 a.m. simply just to drive more than two hours from downtown to Donan. So back then I thought Donan is like an impossible place to me. And all the flowers were treated on the muddy place without any building. So I'm so grateful and so impressed by Amazing. what we have. Sissy, thank you so much for uh, you know, providing your thank insight. Thank you so much We're for joining us. We're going to talk about the business side of all of this because this doesn't just magically happen. You, know, you don't just wake up and suddenly of have course. all your flowers in front of you. Uh, there's a lot of bidding going on, a lot of negotiations going on. Uh, as Cece said, you have to get there early. You have to know what you're doing. And we're going to walk you in. And uh, tell you on, you've been in through here before. So tell us what we're looking at. Correct. This this is not. This is actually not the one that I went. This is a newer one. And Sean, when you came here, came inside to check out the location, and you went out, you said to me, that just took out four years of my life. Why is that? Look at the smoke that hangs <laughs> in the air here. On every desk, someone's got cigarettes. And we have our experts who have been with us throughout this whole new China adventure, Chen Jia and, of course, Victor Gao. Uh, Chen, let me That's ask you uh, just a bit about what's going on here. Why is this so important? Well, this is a place a bit like, I would say, the flower New York Stock Exchange, you know. Look at all these card people, these electrical screens. It looks like sto New York Stock Exchange like 10 years ago. So this is a place where people all trade large bunches of flowers. And I, I look, if you look at every one of them, we've got little details about each box of flower. So this is where people trade. This is the financial center of the flower world. Let me see if I can clear the smoke to see all <laughs> these people down there. Yes. But uh, Jia He just said it, you, you would never have guess that this is a flower trading place. Uh, Mr. Gao, if we just take a look at the screen, we're seeing 
pretty unique names of um, the flowers that they're trying to sell. For the first one is um, Yan Zhi Kou. How do you even Ka Luo La? How do you even translate that? That one is called um, Snow Mountain, and that one is called Bride. That one is called Diana. I've never heard of the, these flowers before. Are they constantly trying to breed new types of flower? Do you think? I think uh, uh, this is a world of its own, and there are so many special terms. For example, for the flower names, etc. And I think this is truly one of the largest uh, flower trading electronic platform in China. And uh, fortunately. Flowers are not physically here; otherwise, they probably will be contaminated by the smoke. <laughs> and if I can make a suggestion, that is, smoke sh smoking should be prohibited. But I was that. But I was just telling our audience why smoke is necessary in here because, especially before important stressful, holidays, it's just so stressful to be sitting here trying to push that button just at the right time, right? Absolutely. I think、uh, this is really the new form of flower trading.、Mm. It's very much online e-commerce. And everything is done on the platform, and I saw many traders using their smartphone to execute whatever they are doing. You know, placing order, etc. So this is truly a very much of a revolutionary thing in China's、uh, flower market. Right, right. And、so、downstairs we have the physical trading platform. Of course. So, gentlemen, for the sake of our health, should we just step <laughs> outside? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Actually, I think we're just about. Oops, he's oh, got hooked. I、say? think we're just about out of time, and、uh, you know, it's it's fascinating to see this. The the fragrant downstairs, the toxic atmosphere <laughs>、uh, up here, if you will. Finance is toxic. But you know, look, this is something that's worked for such a long time, and it's been so important to this region. So it's uh, it's it's it, to me, it's fascinating, and、uh, <laughs> my good friend. Taiwan, I've enjoyed having you in this、uh, walk through us, and Chen Jiahe, and of course、thank、Victor you, Gao. Thank, thank you, you very much, and that does it for our look at the flower shop for this、uh, short peek. Back to you guys. Our crews will travel along three different routes and come to you live from dozens of locations and free mobile studios. Join us for an all-inclusive look at China on our TV channel and digital platforms, September the 9th to the 20th. It is New China Then and Now, in celebration of the 70th anniversary of the People's Republic of China, only on CGTN.